Okay, it, when we're passing, this position is great because I can move from here to here pretty quickly. And from the knee belly position, I can look to get to a more solid pin where I can go chest to chest. I can even, if my partner is sloppy, I can even move to mount. I can look to get underhooks and attack submissions. And if I, I feel like I'm unstable here and I'm gonna fall off or Method's gonna recover guard, I can back off super quick, okay? This position also alone scores points in most competition because uh, the point system in competitions is based around your ability to strike your opponent, right? So here, if we're doing MMA, I could hit Metis in the face pretty confidently. Side control, I can't really do the same because my hands are locked. I have to hold him with my hands. Here I hold him with my knee, so my hands are free to work, okay? We're gonna use this position today and look at some common reaction that happens when we get here. It could be straight off the pass, but uh, in today's context, we're gonna look at it whenever we're in this side control position, right? So I got past Metz's legs, but maybe I can't get to his upper body. Maybe his elbows are tight here, okay? And I can't get a hole in his head, and I can't get under his elbow here. If we try to move up here and we can't get under the elbow, and we try our schoolyard headlocks here, we run into some problems, okay? Maybe I can hold him here, and there are some missions I can hit from here, but if Mats has managed to turn on his knees and up balance me, he can get behind me and take my back. Okay. When I have an underhook, that's physically impossible. Here. I keep him in front of me when I have the underhook, right? So when we're in a position where we feel like maybe we can't get to the underhook, um, and we can't maybe even get to the head, Knee and belly is a great option because now I don't need, no longer need to control them with my arms. I can control them with my leg. So if we start here with our partner. They have their hands in like this. I'm going to put my hands on the mat and that will help me spring forward so I can put my knee in his belly and step my other leg up. So one, two. I pop up here. My knee goes to his belly. I'm pointing my knee at his far shoulder here, and notice that this leg is up for balance, okay? I should be able to distribute my weight evenly here. I should be able to put a lot of pressure on Mattis, but also I should be able to just pop up and stand, okay? So here, I got past his legs, but I have no upper body control. Place my hands. I do the world's easiest push-up from here to here, and I'm in the belly. Notice here that my toes are on the mat with this foot. My, this leg is up, my knee's pointing up. If I have my knee down and Metis bumps into me, I'm unstable. Go back, when I have this leg up, he bumps into me, I can take my weight off and I can come right back. If I'm putting too much weight over here, Metis can bump me over here. That's no good either. That's again why it's important we're on our toes. So if I feel like he's trying to move me away, I can just take my weight off and pop right back in. Okay? So when I'm up here, I'm not dictating a lot, but I'm basically slowing Mattis down because I have some weight on him. So I can feel when he's moving around. And I, it's my job now to follow his reactions and try to get something better than what I started with. Okay? The first reaction we're gonna look at is more of a non reaction. So sometimes when we hear, People are really afraid of getting submitted. Sometimes they'll just keep their arms really tight here and they'll just stay all frozen here, not move around at all. Just try not to get, give any openings. When this happens, this is a perfect time to go into a speed mount, okay? What I'm looking for is I want my knee to the other side of his body and then I'm gonna whip my foot to that side of the body to get to the mount. While moving my leg from one side to the other, I want to avoid him catching my foot and slowing me down, okay? So when I feel like Matt is not moving at all, maybe I see that his legs are a little bit stretched here, like he's not even in a good position to bridge, I'm gonna lean forward and put my hands above his head. Then I'm gonna look to slide my knee across his body and touch the mat. Notice here that my foot stays on this side of his hip here. I don't want him to catch my foot in this transition here. If Matt is catching my foot, 
he has a way out. He can start to push my knee between his legs, and now he can put me into a guard, and now he can counterattack me, okay? So I want to be quick with this, and I want to hide my foot as long as possible. So when it's time to move, I plant my hands, I slide my knee over. As my knee hits the mat, I'm going to turn my hips and whip my foot out. Here. Knee stays tight. I'm only going to be here for a split second, because then I'm going to turn everything in and stop in the mount. I'm going to keep my hands on the mat for a moment when I get to here. Okay? So it's not a... I don't have to move that far. It's a quick move. That's also why we call it a speed mount, because I go from here, boom, to the mount pretty quick. Hands on the mat. I drive my knee all the way across. Look, as the knee hits, I'm whipping my foot up. Slap the mat. As it hits here, now I want to turn everything in and pinch his hips here, and I'm in mount. The reason why I keep my hands to the mat is because if he's electing to move around here, I want to be able to pop right back into the knee and belly. Let's say Matsis turns and tries to catch my foot on the other side. Then I can quickly move back into knee and belly. Right? If he starts to bridge, I can move into the knee and belly and reduce the contact between our hips to kill the bridge. So the good thing here is as I land, if he feels like moving and escaping, I can pop right back up. If he tries to catch my foot, I can move myself away here. And this creates opportunities for me to open them up. He basically has a choice. When I go to here, either he stays here, I score a point for the mount, and now I'm in a better position to advance my attacks, or he tries to get out as I land here, and that's gonna create movement, which creates opportunities, okay? So we can bail in this pretty quick and go right back to knee and belly, either on the same side or the opposite side. Whenever we're moving up to a knee and belly, we want to have most of our weight in our hands so our legs are light and can move side to side. The way we determine where our weight is uh, placed is basically the position of our head. The more my head is back here, the more my weight is down here. As I lean forward to my hands, now it's a little bit more in my hands, but still on my leg. Messi can feel it. Look, when I pop my head forward, I can make my legs super light. When my leg, when my head comes on the line of my comes to the line of my hands, my legs become light. So if I want to try to pop up to knee and belly from here, I don't think I can do it. I'm, I'm not athletic, athletic. But look, as I lean my head forward, right, it's all about the head position. So I take my head up to the line of my hands, basically over his head. Now this becomes super easy. So move your head forward, like pop your head forward when you want to pop back into knee and belly. This goes for side control as well. If my head is down here, I'm not getting up. Here, all day. Move your head more towards your hands and the legs will become lighter. That's number one. Number two, when we're, go when we're slapping our knee over, we want to have contact to the side of his hips here. So, um, so when I move over here, right, as my knee, basically before, as my knee touches, I flick this foot over, right? On the other, when my knee comes over, it's pinching in on this side. On the opposite side, my heel curls in like this. So for a moment, before I drop to two knees, I'm actually positioned like this. Okay, this is really important because this keeps me tight in here. I'm not hanging out here, guys, but for a split second, before I drop to two knees, I'm here. I'm actively curling in here and pushing on the opposite side. This is especially important if he's turning because then I can follow him to the back pretty easy. So when I come in here, as my knee hits, look how this heel curls in. So as my knee hits, look here, airtight, here and here. So if Mattis were to turn uh, in, in a bridge as I moved, I could go to his back. So let's say we're here, Mattis keeps turning in. Like, if you keep turning towards me, yeah, exactly. So you keep turning this way as I go. So I go here, Matt, as Mattis is turning, I can get to his back super quick because I'm attached to the hips, but 
but I can move myself around, okay? We can basically just hit the speed mount, and if they do nothing, we have mount. If they start to move around, we can pop right back into knee and belly, and if we can get them moving and exposing their back, we have a good shot of taking their back from there, okay? Now, if you get really good at getting heavy from here, right, a lot of the time people will look to push with their hands to try to get your weight off them. Okay? It's not a good idea, but if we don't know how to re react to this, uh, it can work. Right? So from here, if I get really heavy, typically Mattis is going to look to either push on my knees, maybe push on my hips, whenever just try to get me off him, right? push with his arms to get me off him. Whenever he starts to push, space starts to, to your st face starts to open up here right under his arm. Now, we wanted to get under the elbow in the beginning, now is our shot. Okay, so as I come up here and I feel like he's pushing on that knee, I'm gonna give a little bit of resistance, to really make him push, and then I'm gonna slide my hand in and drop down chest to chest. Now I can control the arm and the head, and I upgrade it, right? I started here without any upper body control. When I get under here, get a nice underhook and head control, now I have upper body control all of a sudden. So I upgrade it from where I started. We can also now look to mount again. So as I come in here, like I can be a little bit mean here. I can lean my weight into this knee more. Matt is, as he's pushing, I want to resist him a little bit to give, make him do a good push. And then as he pushes through, I slide down here. As I land with this underhook, look, I take my hand to my chin here to avoid him swimming his frame in here. If he gets this hand in, can get annoying, right? When I have my hand and my chin connected, when he tries to swim that arm in, it's very difficult. I can just put my forehead to the mat and it's not gonna happen. Now I can go under his head and I have a nice side control with an underhook, okay? We could accept this here, but we could also look to go back into mount with now with an underhook. So when I want to mount Matsy's here, what I'm looking to do is I wanna open up his elbow here. Okay, this stops him from catching my foot when I try to go over here with his hand and put me back here. So from here, I'm taking my hand on the mat and I'm crawling it in a half circle all the way up over his head. I'm grab my elbow here. Now I just do the same mount style again, but with an underhook. So my knee comes over, I slap through, and I pull myself into a nasty mount here with an underhook. We pop up here, our partner starts to push. As he pushes, I'm leaning weight in to really make him do a good push. Then I put my hand under his elbow. As he pushes through, I drop my knee and I drop my head to his shoulder. I make sure to keep this space closed, okay? My other hand goes under his head and I lock my arms. This is good, but we can make it even better. To get this even better, I start to crawl my hand up in a half circle here to bring his elbow up above his shoulder. Here. I want to grab my own elbow up here and now I can lean forward, knee, boom. And I'm in an awesome amount here where I'm set up to go right into my attacks. Okay. If at any moment he should bridge and turn away from me here, I have an easy back take as well. Okay, I think today we're gonna to focus a little bit more on the pin options first and then build more on the back takes. But anyway, we score the underhook when he really tries to push on us because his elbow has to move away from his body which makes space for our hand to get in. When we get it, we want his arm over his head and then we basically use the same kind of mounting but now we're chest to chest and we have an underhook.